So I was teaching a seminar on the knee bar recently, and there was a variety of sizes and genders and experience levels there. So I felt a little bit weird teaching the knee bar to the smaller women because honestly, when they're going against a bigger guy, it can be hard to finish a knee bar unless you do it perfectly. So first we'll cover some of the problems and then we'll cover what I would do if I was trying to knee bar somebody who was 50 pounds or 100 pounds bigger than me. I always go back to thinking uh, Nogueira against Bob Sapp, one of my favorite MMA fights of all time. If you've not seen it, do yourself a favor, look it up. It's crazy. So Bob Sapp, like 375 pounds, Nogueira with like 225 oh, or something. Like that, yeah. Huge size difference. And this was back when Bob Sapp was sharp and super dangerous. At one point, Bob Sapp standing there, Nogueira spins to a knee bar from the bottom. And that's about as far as he got. Super ballsy. Bob Sapp's thighs are as big as Nogueira's chest. And he basically just flexes his leg, and I think he just smashes Nogueira's face with this knee. I'm gonna do this slowly. And that's the end of the knee bar. So, if you're going to get somebody much bigger, I would not recommend the knee bar, except in these two situations. Let's assume that Richie is 100, 150 pounds heavier than I am. We'll see if my CGI department's got enough to turn- You don't need CGI, Stefan. To turn Mark Ruffalo <laughs> into the Incredible Hulk here. We'll see if you can channel your inner Hulk. So we're here, however I get into the knee bar is immaterial. We're here, I back spin, and I end up with his knee. Now, the normal knee bar, I'm gonna be pulling here, hugging his leg, sandwiching his foot between the mat and my face, and going here. That's great, that works super well. in somebody roughly your own size, maybe 20 pounds heavier, but if he's that much bigger, I'm gonna be trying to put this behind my elbow, right? Swim my arm past it, then grab my own thigh, and that takes all of my arm strength out of it. If I'm doing it on his bottom leg here, same thing. We're here, normally I would try to apply the knee bar here, maybe I would put a little bit of a rotational torque into it, but I, I see how strong his leg is. He's beginning to leg curl it in, oh no. I'm gonna take my arms out of the equation. I'm gonna use them to hold them here just for a second. Then I'm gonna dive my arm past and grab, let's just rotate here please. Dive my arm past and then grab the back of my own hamstring. This is super powerful and you can knee bar somebody much larger. This is how you would knee bar the Incredible Hulk. Method one of finishing the knee bar against somebody much, much bigger is to switch to behind the elbow. Method two is to cheat and use it as a 411 entry. So we're here, I back step, I'm going for the knee bar, I realize, oh my God, like I just feel him clamp his leg down. And there's no way I'm gonna be able to untangle this. Just these, his legs are that strong. I'm gonna take the arm that's closest to him, put it in his armpit, and make some distance here. Move this way so I don't <laughs> knock myself out on the wall. Is that important? Hand in the armpit, make some distance. Now you notice I'm facing him. I'm no longer facing away from him, I am facing him. This now becomes the 411 position where of course I have access to the reverse heel hook. So, number one, swim it behind the arm. That is, as far as I know, IBJJF legal. Number two, very, very IBJJF illegal, but legal in some no-gi situations and also a self-defense situation for that matter, switch to the 411 and go for the reverse heel hook. Two ways to finish The Incredible Hulk.